Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I guess all of you have started joining. You're most welcome. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're waiting for our participants to join in. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I was changing my microphone so that I'm more audible. I guess this is better for you. Are you? Is it audible? Yes. Yes? Good. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, happy to have you join in. I would request you to uh, continue uh, joining in. I think we have a few participants, but we'll have to wait for others to join in as well. Uh, I would request you to keep your audio and video off so that we can uh, it's a it's a dialogue and it's possible to hear each other yeah a few more people have also joined in in a couple of uh, minutes and seconds, we will wait for others to join in as well. Um, who all have uh, joined in? Yes, you are most welcome. Yes, we have Apeksha, we have Gayatri, we have um, some people, names cannot be visible, uh, but you're most welcome. Uh, we have Pooja, we have Sagar, Maria, Mercy, Shelly, you're all very, very welcome to this session, uh, to this session uh, webinar on urban management as a career option. We'll wait for a few more people to join in. This is a webinar hosted by SEPT University, the Faculty of Management. Uh, it's a program which has been set up at SEPT University, a very well-known university, which is more than 50 years old. The program is two years master's program and we'll be talking in that perspective of why do we need more urban managers? What is the need for such a program? Uh, so that's going to be our emphasis in today's discussion. I'm waiting for a few more participants to join in. 
and in a few minutes, uh, rather a few seconds probably, we'll resume our detailed discussion on the webinar today. Are we ready to go? Yeah. Let's begin our discussion. Am I audible? If, if participants have any suggestions, they can chat. There is a chat box. I'm sure you all are familiar uh, in using the browser. There's a chat window. So the participants might want to confirm if they have been able to hear me properly. If there are any suggestions, you can Ping me, you can actually put on a, uh, a message on a chat box. Okay. I'm assuming I'm audible enough. Thank you. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks. Um, others can also look at uh, the chat. So uh, this platform allows you to look at each other's mess messages as well. So it could be, it's kind of a classroom. It's just that we are virtual um, here. So today we are going to talk about uh, how important is the aspect of learning about urban management? What is urban management? And why would such a program be hosted at SEPT University? So, um, there are a few ground rules. Let's set it. Um, one second. There's a little bit of. Let me change this. Ah, okay. Right. Thanks. Kindly mute your audio and video. That will help us to uh, focus on on the discussion points. Please save your queries at the end of the session of the mm -hmm. webinar. You get ample time to have questions raised and answers uh, given. Also, for any technical issues, you may re-log in and try again. So, I'm Manvita Varadi. I am the Dean of the Faculty of Management at SEPT University. SEPT has, as you might have known, five faculties. This is the youngest faculty at SEPT. SEPT is known for its architecture, planning, technology, and design programs. Faculty of Management was added to SEPT in 2013. And since then, we've had this program running at SEPT University. It's a two years master's program. Accept. As you know, our challenge is that India is urbanizing very fast. You might have read in the papers, you might have known about it. This is, our country is one of the most populous countries in the world. You also know that in 2001 census mentioned there were there's an increase of 2,774 2, towns since then. So that increase of urbanization, one would say nationally from 27.8% to 31.2% nationally. And some of the states have really urbanized even faster. It's about 38 to 43%. Tamil Nadu, Gujarat are really most urbanized state, Maharashtra. 
So that increase in people coming to cities has put pressure on urban areas. And that constitutes a large part of our country. I'm sure many of you might have also come into the cities. Maybe it's your second generation, third generation immigrant or a migrant to a city. Our roots are probably in some of the towns and some of the some of the um, cities, some of the towns we've come from. Economic growth is mainly responsible for getting people to the cities and that also leads to more economic growth. As more and more people come to urban areas and why would they come? There are more jobs, there are more industries, there are more manufacturing, more service areas, more, more activities happening in the cities. People come to urban areas and they are more productive. They would come and it's, it's their livelihood. And hence, the cities would then give them employment opportunities. They would want to live there. There is housing, right? So for that, there, is, there are uh, systems in which cities are formed. There is a governance structure to it. There are the, the, the governments are responsible for providing services. There is a private sector uh, which, which also supports in many of the aspects which the governments, uh, which that's very, very critical. So it's, it's a combination of people, private sector and the government and together they create the, the aspects which would help our cities to grow. Our cities require constant support in that sense. It's an organic, it's an organism, it's an organic area. Now, for doing all of this, we require urban managers. Our cities are governed, it's a third tier of the government. Our cities are governed under a law, under an act of the, which is, which is by the state government. And hence, to make our cities livable, efficient, and robust, we need better management. And who are the people who would manage the cities? We need them. As a country, we might, we, we known, we've, we've known that there are more designers, architects, engineers, planners. However, our country did lack good urban managers. There's a challenge because of the urbanization which is, which is brought in. Also, we've, we've also known that our country had large business schools, unknown business schools, but there are hardly any schools which have offered urban management as an option. Hello, is that a, can I, yeah. So except we've, we've, uh, we've had uh, this program since now many years, this is a seventh year that we will be offering. Uh, it's a master's of urban management program. It basically gives us many competency areas. The students are trained to be urban managers. They are taught finance, they're taught communication, they're taught leadership and decision making. There is business modeling and strategy. There are many courses in human resource and, and finance. So the program is organized as in four semesters 
and I'll talk to you about how the progression of learning happens from semester one to semester four. Basically, urban management program creates a pool of professionals of high quality and dedicated to management of human habitat. We're utilizing specialization of SEPT as a habitat and built environment, and there is uh, co-learning within the campus as well. The entry to urban management is from any discipline, and that's a core belief of us that it's an interdisciplinary program. Architects, engineers, people with commerce background, people with finance background, people with backgrounds in arts can also join in. So minimum requirement is three years bachelor's degree and you are ready to join in to the program. The curriculum is organized around studio learning. Now why studio? Studio is a place where live projects are given to students and live discussions happen with the faculty members. Students do feasibility, they go and learn on the job, they go and visit urban areas where there is need for improvement. They come back to the studio in discussion with the faculty members, they come up with solutions. So that's the core of our learning, the studio learning process. We have supporting core courses, we have supporting electives. There are also site visits and study tours organized. Many, many guest lectures are also organized for the students with in, in, in consultation with the faculty members who are, who are teaching those courses. There's a large part of SEPT where university level courses like summer winter schools are offered. Students have ample choice to, to take those courses as well. They range from two credits to five credits. And that's an experience they gain along with their regular curriculum. The summer winter programs also allow students to travel internationally, domestically as well. The program also encourages students to undertake internships. It's normally taken at the, at the end of the first year. Uh, it's about six to eight weeks internship where students are encouraged to be placed within the industry or an organization to understand how the world works and how after finishing the course, where would they like to join? What would they do? So it's an exploratory uh, level for, for the students to understand how the world works. That's how our pedagogy at SEPT, and especially the Faculty of Management, is set at. The four semesters is organized in the program with different levels of learning. When students join in, they're joining from any discipline. They are ready to learn about built environment, about they're ready to know and understand what it encompasses. So the first studio and the largest credits are assigned to that studio is 14. And that studio is Urban Management Foundation Studio, where students are given competencies in understanding governance, how urban areas are organized, what are the important aspects of, of running uh, a city, a town, a township. So their projects are, are given at a plot or I would say a township level and they explore 
the problems, the, the, the good aspects of the townships, understand water supply, sanitation, all the utilities, and they help the uh, plot level organizing uh, organization to understand what the lacunas are, what the gaps are, and how do we fill that gaps. So that, that's, that's what they learn at the Urban Management Foundation studio. The studio is supported by two main or core courses, which is financial management and budgeting, and human resource management and organization behavior. These two core courses support students in understanding how the assessment would be done in the studio as well. So it's symbiosis between studio and their other programs. That's their first semester. Apart from that, they are allowed to choose from a set of electives which are offered at the university level and at the faculty level as well. After the first semester, which is about 17 weeks program, they move to the second semester. The second semester is very intense and they work on understanding a ward or a small municipality or a city. They understand the gaps, they do assessment uh, of utilities, of human resource, of uh, various programs, maybe the city or the ward would have, uh, would have undertaken. And they would work on, on the, the given problem uh, for 17 weeks and come up with solutions. Many a times the solutions are presented to the clients, so-called clients, and uh, many of the suggestions are taken, taken up uh, by the city or the uh, respective parastatal organization. The program is also supported as, as in the first semester, two other core uh, program, uh, two core subjects, which is contracts management and e-governance. They give robust understanding in this aspect so that it helps students to assess their ward city much better understand the procurement process at the city or the or the uh, municipality level the third semester focuses on service operations how does urban service work what are the issues in uh, providing a particular service in a city so students in the past have worked on um, assessing how the postal service works, how the railways function, how the logistics hub, what is a logistics hub. So a lot of such aspects of service operations are learned in the studio. That's also a 14 credit course. There is the the other core subjects which support semester three studio are the urban civic engagement and quantitative techniques and research methods. It's also in preparation to the fourth semester's work for the students, which is a DRP, which is directed research proposals or projects or a thesis. It's a research based research based work students can undertake. In the, in the fourth semester. It's about 20 credit semester as well. So all in all, there are 80 credits to be gained uh, during a two year program. The details of uh, semester one in the foundation, in the urban management foundation studio, uh, there are few which are listed. One would understand the, the solid waste, the drainage, public lighting, water sewer systems, facilities planning. And facilities management is a large part of our understanding in the first studio. The, the transitioning townships and panchayats to our ULDs is learned in that studio as well. Heritage management is also discussed 
in the studio and some of the students take up those uh, so the other aspects uh, of learning in the in the studio the class is divided into various sections and hence it, it really enables student to work in team and also focus on their individual strengths financial management and budgeting is important aspect as i mentioned earlier where accounting budgeting capital financing and debt administration is discussed in detail uh, it's about two credit program uh, a course rather which supports understanding of in the foundation program human resource management is one of the key areas of understanding how people work how people are important how do you discuss management of human resources and labor relations how the time and work management happen what are basically principles of management so it's a blend of understanding management and urban and understanding urban areas it's quite a complex phenomenon but we've been able to put you put this on a on a platter and offer it to you uh, the in the next semester goes into detail of understanding zone ward administration regional administration the local urban government acts development acts the scz or the special economic zones industrial townships role of municipal corporation in urban development authorities that is the focus and again students would be divided into various teams to look at one particular ward or a municipality the subject here which is giving more understanding on procurement and contract management processes because cities also contract out services they work with private sector how does it really happen how can they so the discussion on public private partnership also uh are are dealt in this uh in this uh, course we discuss about infrastructure development contract tendering and administration as well the course in e governance is supporting the understanding of urban governance and management program uh mis concept what is a national e governance plan what is government to citizens government to business government to government activities and initiatives of the central government the state government and if cities have taken up any of this is also discussed it's a in depth understanding of ict which is information communication technologies in urban services and global good practices are also discussed as part of that studio in the course the third semester focuses on as i mentioned earlier on service operations there are many states in the country who have different approaches there are certain aspects of logistics which have been taken up maybe uh, the private sector logistics has also been discussed here there are there is emphasis on understanding business modeling it as well how the performance management and measurement is is important as part of analyzing service operations within the city urban civic engagement is another course which the students are encouraged to take where innovative business models are discussed branding of the city is talked about the basics of developing business models are also discussed at the same time the other program on quantitative techniques and research methods will also provide students an insight on how to undertake research which is then followed in the fourth semester as i already mentioned there are a lot of career opportunities after you graduate from this program government agencies who require the support are 
ready to accept the students, but still procurement may not happen directly to, with the government agencies, but through management consultancies or nonprofit organizations can support recruitment processes with the governments. There are many, many private organizations, the smart cities which have come up, their needs of hiring competent people who understand urban and are, are good managers uh, to be able to help city governments or the state or parastatals to function efficiency, effic efficiently and better. Many academic institutions also prefer hiring urban management program graduates because of their understanding of complex issues in urban areas and they, they being able to guide future students in the field. So SEPT as a visionary institute, which is now more than 50 plus years old, I, I think it's more than 55 years old now, is an institute committed to building professionals with in-depth understanding of human settlements. And this piece, which as I mentioned earlier, was added about seven years ago, and that makes a holistic development of students accept. They not only learn principles of management in urban areas, but also learn and co-learn from other faculties in planning, technology, design, and architecture. It's a holistic learning which is, which is uh, available to students who would want to come here and study. So this is a two years postgraduate course in urban management and it would be wonderful to have thorough professionals come out of this program and help our country to do better uh, in, in, in improving our lives in the country. SEPT offers not only academic but also a cultural diverse platform for students to groom and learn from each other. It has an active social life, an active cultural life at SET. It's a co-learning system. It's, it's discussion based. It's, it's based on studios, juries. There are discussions. There are, they're learning from each other and uh, in a camaraderie, uh, style, the students are nurtured to, to learn about such complex issues as managing urban areas. I would encourage you to apply. The last date is 14th March, which is very short. It's uh, very, very uh, close now. But we encourage you to apply uh, to this program if you're interested. The details are on the screen. I'm sure you can see that. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available to discuss and you can use your chat box to uh, raise your questions and we are here to help you to, uh, to answer that. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, um, you can ask your questions. There's a chat, uh, group chat. It's, it's called Zoom group chat. If you can see that and you can raise your questions and I'm here to answer you uh, all your queries. I think there's a question from Apeksha. Uh, would there be a personal interview after the written exam? No, Apeksha. Uh, this year we have discontinued personal interview process. There'll be only written exam. And that's scheduled on 11th April at 3.30. And there are six test centers 
Uh, I'm sure you would have gotten that information, but also more information is available on our website as well. Akshita Anand is asking, does this cover construction management, uh, construction management designations as well? Uh, no, Akshita. Uh, it talks about managing urban areas. Construction management is a field of knowledge which is very focused on how do you manage a site, how do you manage a large construction process. This program focuses on post-construction, maybe post-occupancy, when the, when the townships, your large constructions have completed, and how do you manage the areas? It's operations and ma management of large urban areas. It could be a township, it could be a city, it could be a town, it could be a large settlement. So I hope I've been able to answer uh, your question. Um, okay, Dwani is asking, can I do this program? I have done my bachelor's in architecture. Of course you can. And this would give you a very different perspective on we as architects design and uh, we design beautiful buildings. We get them built very well, but who's then looking at its management because most buildings, campuses, cities fail after, uh, after a while. You might have realized that uh, the buildings are not kept pr uh, properly. The facilities management does not work. So from facilities management to managing urban areas of large, uh, large campuses, all would be covered here and you're most welcome to join Dwani. Ganesha is asking, Okay, um, I'm a research scholar in urban studies. Is there an opportunity to, to, for me to work with SEPT University? Well, Ganesha, I think this is more like a discussion on uh, admissions, but uh, for work opportunities, you should send your CV to HR, the human resource division at SEPT, and they'll be happy to guide you. I receive, uh, Sachin is asking, uh, I received the invite to join webinars 15 minutes late. Okay, uh, that's sad. Uh, maybe there was some technical glitch, uh, but I'm sorry, this recording would be available to you uh, in a while and you can, uh, And but if you have any questions, you can uh, ping me again. Where the prerequisites to the course discussed in the beginning? Oh, well, yeah, prerequisites were discussed and it's open to any graduate from any stream. So you're most welcome to join the program. The details, as you know, uh, the last date is 14th March and you might want to uh, look at the website for much more details. But any discipline, any graduate is welcome to join the program because we need, we need as, as managers, we need many, many, many disciplines. We need finance graduates, we need commerce graduates, arts graduate, we need um, architects, engineers, all people from various streams. And it's an interdisciplinary program and you're most welcome to join. Okay, Ronnie Sharma is asking, is work ex required or fresher can apply? Well, freshers can definitely apply. Uh, WorkEx brings a new learning in the batch and uh, when a batch is uh, full with uh, various uh, uh, people of various work experiences, it really helps. Actually, the, the website mentions uh, this very clearly and you're most welcome to join. Uh, you've done your BTAC and uh, it's perfectly fine. Any, any stream of bachelor's in technology uh, with a management experience and learning would really be good for your program, uh, good for your career. So Ronnie, you, you might want to consider applying to this uh, program as well. Most welcome. Kavya Ramesh, um, is professional experience mandatory for, for this course? Not really, but if you have more experience, you are 
uh, you are uh, you would probably score a few marks better in your uh, in your evaluation but that's it uh, you're you're welcome to join join the program um, will you please name some companies visited uh, campus for a placement uh, companies regularly come for placements at the accept um, some of them are uh, e by pwc like the uh, then cbri uh, there, there are other uh, organizations such as uh, non-profits who come to uh, to come crystal there are non-profits like sat cee uh, umc and uh, the Berlin research um, in energy uh, as well so these are a few which which come to my mind but you can again refer to the uh, website for more details is the application form there is a column asking major subjects in bachelor's degree or even hsc what are we supposed to write in that number of subjects name well uh, yes you should write this kind of subjects you've learned and the kind of grades you've received so um, say in your in your graduation you have done uh, say bachelor's of commerce then you are you might have majored in finance or accounting uh, or uh, any of those you can highlight uh, as part of your major subjects if you have done your architecture if you have done your uh, thesis you might want to mention the 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 topic of your thesis you might want to mention also the um, the subjects you've learned as part of your architecture engineering studies so it's the column is uh, put for you to fill in as much detail and evaluators will understand your profile much better give some light on which kind of questions asked in the written exam and from where can we prepare okay uh, this detail is also available on our uh, brochure and on the website. Uh, the, the, the written uh, questions are uh, in three uh, phases. One is logical reasoning. The second is language understanding and skills. Uh, the third is data interpretation. Uh, you you might have read in your brochures in detail. Uh, along with that, uh, there are and most of them are multiple choice questions. Uh, it would be a one hour exam, uh, and you can go to the test centers to learn to to give the exam. Um, your online application form also carries uh, a detailed uh, understanding of statement of purpose your academic performance your work experience and your awards and recognition so you might want to look at a detail uh, on on the brochure and on the on the website when the details are given exam also talks about your understanding of awareness of urban issues so how maybe uh, the current topics, your newspapers are, are important for you to be updated uh, of, of current affairs um, as well. Your written exam will have a descriptive component of, uh, of essay writing as well. So you might want to uh, practice writing essays. Um, okay. This is Rohini, and uh, she's asked, could you please give me a gist on how we can prepare for entrance exam? I just mentioned Rohini. I hope you've gotten the answer. Uh, a lot of details are on the website, and you can also text uh, or write an email if that is not sufficient for you. Uh, I just mentioned, so I'm not repeating myself, uh, Rohini. Akshita is asking, uh, is the program helpful? If we aim to set up own architectural planning firm in future, for sure. If you understand how to manage people, if you understand how cities work, any architectural planning practice will be helpful because you'll really understand how urban works or does not work. 
right? Uh, Sachin is asking, it's open for all graduates with 55 minimum per second. Yes, that's true and that's correct. Um, Kavya is asking, is architectural experience enough or should it be urban centric? Architectural experience is enough because you deal with built environment and, and that's, that's really enough. Vaishnavi is asking, how important is a recommendation letter? Yes, it is very important. Um, recommendation letter should be uh, attached. There are two uh, requested uh, and it could be sent online submission. Yeah, sorry. If there is an on online submission of the recommendation letter, link uh, will yeah, and the link will go to the referee. The referee. Mm -hmm. Correct. So uh, this has also been uh, written in the in the brochure. I'm sure you can uh, visit our website, and there is a link to our uh, brochure as well that will give you many answers, Vaishnavi. Uh, Pooja is asking: uh, post occupancy work in the course focuses on yeah can you please tell us how does it help in terms of city development and management in context of indian cities well puja you learn from uh, one uh, from a township level to a city level so while understanding how people centric work happens or does not happen at township uh, the post occupancy surveys would make you understand whether the management or the ONM, which is operations management of the of the area is happening properly or not what are the expectations of people and the same when you look at cities or towns uh, you would understand what your people require so that will prepare you for the second semester uh, in 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 uh, from the first semester to the second semester and understand how people are important in making urban area work or not work? Uh, Pooja, I hope I've answered your question. Okay, Dwani is asking, uh, I filled online form for masters in architecture, except is it possible for get admission in urban ma management? Well, you're, uh, yeah, of course you can uh, send one more application to, and you might want to do an ur application to urban management as well. So at CEPT there are, as I mentioned, there are five, uh, faculties and there are multiple programs offered at those faculties and uh, a program two years masters in urban management is under the faculty of management and you might want to fill that online form yeah I hope I have made myself clear Twani. you're most welcome to apply uh, okay I guess uh, these are the questions. Anyone, any more clarification? I'm, I'm here for a couple of minutes more. Okay. I hope I have not missed out any anybody's question. You might want to ping again if I have missed your question. So entrance test, test details are uh, also available on our website and please remember to go to the test center for the written exam. This time we do not have personal interview. There's a change in the, in the process of uh, admissions. We are making everybody's life much more easier by not getting you to travel and as you know, it's difficult now to travel in these days, right? The current uh, problem of coronavirus and the travel advisories suggest that we should travel less and less. Uh, but you'll have to go to the test centers nevertheless. And uh, there's only a written exam uh, for, for one hour. It's on 11th April uh, from 3.30 it's a two hours from 3.30 to 5.30. So kindly note to go to your test centers and give that um, 
Uh, and you have to go one hour before the test set to the test center and register yourself. Uh, this is really making uh, everybody's life easier and you have multiple choice to travel to your nearest to your test center. So this is the first time SEPT has organized written exams across the country and you're most welcome to join, uh, join the program. I hope I've been able to give you a, a perspective on what we do at SEPT in the Faculty of Management. So most welcome to join Masters of Urban Management program, a two-year Masters at SEPT. Thank you so much. Uh, there is one question about the test centers. Uh, we will ping you uh, on the details, but it, they are available on our website. There are six test centers and uh, uh, the details are that, yeah, so it's Ahmedabad, Bhopal, Chennai, Kolkata, Pune, Pune, Delhi. and Delhi. Delhi, right? Thank you, Dwani. Okay, see you all. Bye-bye. Yes. One more question. I was asking, I have a query regarding application. Since the extra program will be marked on the basis of uh, how can we provide the certificate? Sorry, is there a question? I think I've signed off. Okay. I can't see that question, but um, okay. So you can take scans of the certificate. Roini has a question. You can take scans of your certificate, uh, and uh, uh, it's an online application. It's it's all right to put uh, your extracurricular uh, details, and there is a section in the admission form. Uh, you can make a list, and some of the highlighted ones you can attach as as scan copies. So, and if you have more questions, our admin can get in touch with you. Thank you. Was it a space to attach? Yes. Okay. Our admin.